that you know as we reach cost parity with lithium these advantages around safety recyclability robustness lithium ion is the king of all batteries but they're still too expensive for truly long-term storage at about 151 dollars per kilowatt hour it's not a new idea but zinc bromine batteries are emerging as an up-and-coming contender for being inexpensive and exceedingly safe that being said is it possible that zinc bromine batteries will be the future of energy storage and how might it be applied in real life let's find out in today's episode of tesla car world. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. Did you know that the first secondary zinc bromine battery was patented in 1885? Despite this promising start, when the battery faced the challenge of short lifespans, lithium ion and lead acid became the stationary storage darlings of the 1990s. Now, with 30 years of innovations under their proverbial belts, the Australian company Gellion Technologies believes it has found a more affordable and durable approach with its zinc bromine gel battery. Gellion said its proprietary non-flow zinc bromide battery technology offers a low-cost, robust, safe, and recyclable alternative. Um, our focus is on developing a new type of non-flow battery based on zinc bromide chemistry. Um, for that stationary energy storage. So how much is the cost of this battery compared to the lithium ion? Most of the Earth's bromine is found in ocean water, so we're literally swimming in it. It's easy to see then how much of a difference that makes. After more than a decade of declines, volume-weighted average prices for lithium ion battery packs across all sectors have increased to $151 per kilowatt hour in 2022. That's about $51 more expensive than the zinc bromine price because Gellion is targeting a commercial product cost of just $100 per kilowatt hour, which is a highly competitive rate. Obviously, since cost is hugely dependent on volume, the company's strategy is to tolerate a loss in its first few years while production scales up. Moreover, a new battery typically requires a new production line, but the zinc bromine technology uses 70% of the same processes as lead acid batteries, making it very cost efficient. The Gallion team discovered that for them to retune an existing lead acid battery factory for 1 gigawatt hour production capability, it would cost 16 million US. To build a new lithium ion factory with a 1 gigawatt hour capacity, on the other hand, would cost 125 million US, which is a game changing difference. So, as for the cost of systems integration, which involves shipping and installing the batteries, the Department of Energy figures for lithium range between about $46 to $52 per kilowatt hour. The cost of zinc bromine is between $10 to $18 per kilowatt hour. And in other aspects, like the cost of engineering, construction equipment, connecting to the grid, and transformers, zinc bromine is also cheaper. But what is it that gives zinc bromine an edge over lithium ion? In fact, each Gallian battery uses negatively charged zinc plates and positive bromine ions, partitioned by an internal membrane. Its electrolyte gel is fire retardant, meaning its batteries can't catch fire or explode. According to the company, this gel is so stable that it can withstand temperatures as low as negative 15 degrees Celsius and as high as 50 degrees Celsius. For reference, the ideal operating temperature for lithium cells is 10 to 55 degrees Celsius. So, last year, a Tesla lithium ion battery pack caught fire during testing at the Victoria Big Battery in Australia. It burned for three days. Another instance which involved a Tesla Megapack energy storage system, this time in California, caught fire last September. While these events are rare and lithium ion batteries are generally very safe, when things go wrong, there are serious safety concerns. An issue that attracts a lot of attention is how recyclable the zinc bromine battery really is. The way they're constructed, the lead acid battery that's in your car, and those batteries are recycled over 95% worldwide. As it stands, zinc bromine batteries have a round trip efficiency of 90% and is non-toxic because bromine is essentially just a salty solution. The company claims it's more than 95% recyclable. Because the zinc bromine electrolyte is dense, it's often recycled by the oil and gas industry. And since the battery's casing is the same as a lead acid battery, it can be recycled in the same way, but with the added advantage of what the company calls more benign 
nine components as in non-toxic lead or corrosive sulfuric acid. However, due to the great advantages of the battery, it will have some roadblocks ahead. Zinc bromine batteries are definitely not as energy dense. On a grid scale, Gellion's batteries have an energy density of 120 watt hours per kilogram. In contrast, the energy density of lithium ion batteries ranges between 260 to 270 watt hours per kilogram, more than double that of zinc bromine. This means Gellion would need a battery more than twice as big to store the same amount of energy, making zinc bromine batteries not ideal for your phone, laptop, EVs, or other applications where size is an important consideration. Gellion says the zinc bromine battery charge lasts for 6 to 12 hours, as opposed to lithium batteries which last 1 to 2. That's the brilliance of the technology, because we've taken a very established and very safe form of chemistry that has been proven in being very good for long-term storage, which is 6 to 12 hours, and we put it in a form factor of a lead-acid battery, which means you can use the cell assembly, sealing, vacuum filling, so we're using all these standard pieces of industrial equipment equipment to manufacture our battery, CEO McCoy said. Gellion initially plans a stationary energy battery to be used in agriculture, mining, and for remote communities delivering reliable renewable energy for off-grid systems. Later, Gellion aims to scale up the battery technology for use in solar and wind farms and for grid stabilization. Large installations supporting you know, a solar and wind farm. Back in February of 2022, Gellion's battery technology was among the energy storage technologies being tried out by a Spanish multinational infrastructure and renewable energy conglomerate at a solar PV plant site in northern Spain. Installation of the 25 kilowatt slash 100 kilowatt hour system is set to begin in the third quarter of this year at Axiona's Monte del Cierzo 1.2 megawatt solar farm. Gellion's battery, which is called Endure, could be added to Axiona's supplier portfolio if the 6 to 12 month long project proves successful. We are delighted to be launching production of our breakthrough battery, proving it can be produced at scale with existing lead acid battery manufacturing processes, Gellion's CEO said. The Gellion zinc bromine gel battery is certainly what the market needs at the moment. The Australian company will continue developing its battery until this year when it plans to release its first zinc bromine model, the Endure. Moreover, Gellion Gellion will test its units in electric cars until then, and we can't wait to see how the technology influences the ever-growing EV market in the years to come. How do you feel about the future of zinc bromine batteries? Will lithium-ion batteries be a thing of the past? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below.